That gets my goat? Really? I had a, an idea for a screenplay years ago about a high school class where something happens and one by one, everyone in the high school class starts to die of like natural causes. And it, you know, this may sound pompous, but it was a great idea. At the time that I had it, I'm like, wow, what a great idea. I can't wait to write this. But I didn't. And I would puzzle it out in my head and I would try and figure out a way to convey it. And and at some points, I would try and figure out a way to turn it into a a short story or a novel or something like that instead of a a movie, a a screenplay Mm -hmm. idea. And this year, this summer, 2011, I finally wrote that as the screenplay, as the way that, that I wanted to write it. But I don't know if I wrote it to the potential of this great idea that I had five years ago or four years ago or whatever it was. I don't know if it's a good script at all or if I took a great idea and made something mediocre out of it because of what I chose to focus on, because of the ending that I chose to give it, because of the perspective. You know, it's like maybe this main character shouldn't have been the main character because it wasn't funny enough, because it wasn't scary enough, whatever the deal is. And maybe that's how it is with Stephen King, is he has a great idea that a 20-year-old Stephen King would have turned into a long walk or a Shawshank Redemption or a, an Eyes of the Dragon or a, a, or, or a Running Man. You know, no, Tommy Knockers was one of the very first bloated, mediocre King books. But yeah, The Running Man is just wonderful and 200 pages, you know, that kind of thing. But that he has the same idea now and his perspectives have changed and he doesn't want to write a thriller. You know, he wants to write that slow burn kind of story. Who wants to write a Lisi story? He does. And it's like, okay, this will be interesting because we'll examine a marriage where all of the newness has gone away and they've sort of become comfortable and friendly and what would happen if she found out that he had secrets that hadn't been you know and things like this because he's bored with the young man is backpacking across america and he stumbles upon kind of stories but yeah it just it bums me out because he's not the same writer that he was and the magic is rarely there for me that were there for his books. And I don't know what I would do if I picked up an old story and said, I can't write anything this good now. I mean, usually I'll pick something up and like you, I'll be like, oh, geez, look at this. You know, this could be improved in 10 seconds, which hopefully means that I'm getting better. But maybe I just my priorities are all on different things now. I I don't know. Maybe Stephen King thinks that way when he picks up uh the stand or something else he pulls it out and he looks at it and he goes this should have been 2,000 pages long maybe he looks at it and thinks wow this is not good here it needs this and it needs that or he's picking up uh, Salem's Law and saying wow this would have been much better if I'd just done this and that God, two ten seconds and I could improve it maybe it's the same as you just different tastes that uh, people have I don't know it's a it's an interesting conundrum. I wonder if there's anybody listening to the show who thinks Stephen King writes better now than he used to. Now, well, you know, it's possible that he has better technique, or he, his prose is more eloquent, or, or his characters are more vibrant, or something. I just I don't see it, and part of me always blames it on that accident because for years after the accident, every story was about that accident. And I'd be like, okay, granted, this was the most major thing that has happened to him maybe since, you know, becoming a father or a husband, you know, or a man um, was actually experiencing death or the closest thing you can get to it Mm -hmm. and all that. But it just, yeah, I, I, I think we could talk for hours and hours and hours about writing because I can, I never shut up about it. I just, (laughs) I'm interested and I want to know the answers and I want to be a better writer um, but more than that, I want somebody to say, you're a good writer, that this is good. This thing that you've done is good. You're a good boy. <laughs> you know, we mm-hmm. talked about that before. And I'm sure as hell aren't writing, but talking about writing feels kind of like the cousin of writing. Well, so. you're writing a, a fair amount this year. You've probably written more than you've written in other years. I would be willing. But how many stories do you think you've written this year? I actually went through and looked at my folder. So I know that I've done almost five that's all I've got this year is almost five. Well, that's still a record for you. It's got to be. Probably. I probably have seven this year, and I feel like I've been slacking off. I'm sure I didn't write a story in September, and you wrote almost two. You know, I, I, I don't know. Because, see, I write longhand. I write in a notebook. I don't like to type. 
them out. And then I'll have finished a story, but I can't share it with anybody because it's in a notebook. And so I have to take time away from writing to type up the story. But in the past, that's been helpful to me because it's like a, a second draft. Uh-huh. You know, I'll notice all sorts of things or I'll want to add to things as I'm typing it up. But it's easy to be lazy and, and you never have to tell me that I've written a crappy story if you never read it. That's true. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about writing. I, this, the, usually we don't talk about writing on That Gets My Goat, but it's October, and like you said last week. And, you know, we just, you've written so much in September and, and yeah, do you feel like, do you feel proud? I do. I feel really uh, proud and I feel like I'm going somewhere. That's the best part about it. You know what I mean? I feel like that was really worthwhile and I'm, I'm headed in the right direction. And I think that I still got a lot of crap in me. I, I actually feel like maybe we need to pause and I need to go take it. But I'm going to, I'm going to. Hold on to it because, yeah, I feel like I got a lot of crap in me to write still, sadly. I'm, I'm sure, probably more critical of myself than most other people would be, not of themselves, but of me. I'm sure you look at my stuff and be like, oh, this is pretty good or whatever, where I'm just like, oh, this sucks. I just couldn't get it right or whatever. But who knows? Who knows better? Do I know better than you know better? I I don't know. And that's something we were talking about on a regular show today, which is weeks ago, probably in reality, uh, that that has aired. You know, I think it's good and you think it's crap. Who's right? Yeah, it's hard to know, um, but you got to keep working on it. I feel like I have a lot of crap to write, so I better keep at it. And hopefully I can take lessons. And we also talked about this in the show that aired earlier that was the regular show that you just mentioned. Wait, 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 what episode was it? Just so people know. Episode 114. Yeah, but in English, what's that? Giving birth? Giving birth, okay. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can take the lessons that I learned from each story and apply them into the next story and get better and keep getting better each time so that I don't look at other people's stuff and think, gosh, this guy's stuff is so much better than mine. I, I don't think I could do that. Because now I don't have to think that because I've learned how to do that and I can do it. And I don't have to go, wow, this guy's characters are real and mine are fake. Well, they say that there's two kinds of writers. There's the writer who reads something and says, this is awesome. Oh, my gosh. I, someday I want to be like this. Oh, dude, I want to be a writer. And the other group is somebody that reads something and is like, you know what? This is crap. I can do better than this. Someday I'm going to be a writer. Maybe one day you're one thing and the other day you're the other thing. I think you can be both. I've certainly read professional stuff that I thought was totally, totally mediocre. And then I've read stuff that wasn't professional, that was written just by some student. It's like, I am 14 years old and I have yet to touch a bosom. And yet he's written something so awesome. I could never accomplish that. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I, I don't know where that bosom thing came from. Everyone needs a bosom for a pillow. They do. Everyone needs a bosom. But yeah, hopefully I can I can keep that up. I mean, I, think, I guess we're kind of coming back around to that. But that was the whole point of my exercise. And the point was to continue with my 500 words during October. And eventually I hope to up it to 750 words or to a thousand words a day so that I'm actually I'm really getting on it because we mentioned before the however many and some people have said it was what a hundred thousand two hundred thousand words of crap and it's gotten as high as I think Bakel said it was a million and I was like oh Tobias no a million words maybe even and and if I'm writing a thousand words a day that's several years before I get to a million that's, yeah, like three years at least of doing a thousand words a day to get to a million words. So, you know, it's a ways off before I would be ready to go. But I really need to get on it and go after it so that I can be because my life's not getting any longer. So it's time to get with it. And on that note, we part. I'm Big Anklevich. I'm Rich Outfield. See you later, folks. Good night. You know what gets my goat? That this show is produced under your Creative Commons 3.0 license. <clears throat> We're doing that gets my goat about your mom. About what was it? How dare you? About Backman? Back, Backman?
Michelle Bachman. That's that magic spider.